Germany 2, Denmark 0 and the Mannschaft are through to the quarterfinals after dispatching Denmark after two goals from none other than King Kai Havertz and Jamal Musiala. Yeah, man. I don't know what it is. Every time English referees in this tournament have refed, because you know when they ref, they bring the whole team, right? So it was Michael Oliver, and then you'll find it's Anthony Taylor, who's the fourth official, and then Stuart Atwell with the VAR. Every single time the English refs have been there, there has been drama. And it's been VR drama. It's been disallowed goals drama. To be fair to them, this one, I mean, it was fair. All through, they were fair. Decisions were made correctly. But I don't know why, it, like, every other game, like, automated offside takes seconds. But in this game, it took longer than usual. And the last game as well, like, the English refs, it's like drama just follows them. To be fair to them, for me, personally, all decisions were gotten right. Um, Anderson had a rough, rough three minutes. He scores a goal for Denmark. He believes he's, take, he's put his team 1-0 up, despite being under so much pressure, especially early on in the first half. So this was somewhere through the second half, right? Yeah, three minutes after halftime, basically. And then he thinks he scored a goal, after Delaney, I believe it was Delaney who just is fighting in the middle of the box, like fighting in a good way, like fighting for the ball. And finally, he's deflected, pass, shot, whatever it is as he's falling down. Falls to Anderson who slots it in the corner. And then it goes to VR, which takes forever. I don't know why. Like automated offside, this thing should be taking seconds, right? Like it has in most games. In this game, it just took a bit longer. Um... I don't know if they were checking a foul, whether they were checking a foul first and then they checked uh, the offside. I don't know what it was, but it was just weird to see like them take forever. But it was it was the right call, I believe, because I think they were trying to figure out if this, if uh, Delaney had actually touched the ball or it came off a German defender. Um, why is this thing looking weird? Yeah, so I think that's what they're trying to figure out. But all in all, it just took a bit longer. So there's a bit of confusion. And then um, literally they... Germany come go to the other side and within two minutes, a cross comes in, it comes off Anderson's hand. We all thought it was just a normal deflection off the foot or something. And people are st having, still haven't recovered from the Denmark disallowed goal because everyone is just confused. The scoreboard is still saying 1-0 to Denmark. Um, it, then it changed, then this happened. Like, it was it was such a weird, weird three minutes for Anderson. It's, then they claim that it came off his hand to be fair, they use the ultra edge, something similar to what they use in cricket, which you guys have seen by now. There's like a graph on screen, and then it just shows you that the ball has hit the guy's hand. If you guys don't know, the new ball that they're using at the Euros actually have a chip inside. So every every single contact the ball has with hand, foot, whatever, a sound is made, and they can actually see it in VR. Um, they can actually see the wave, right? So the moment in which the ball is kicked to the moment it comes there's nothing, right? Because the ball is in the air. When it touches his hand, it, you can clearly see it touches his hand. You don't even need that ultra edge. But, you know, now, people look at the ultra edge first and then look at the hand, as opposed to looking at the hand first then looking at the ultra edge, which um, is a bit, it's a bit different, like something to get used to. But, I mean, it's getting the right decisions. To be fair, that technology is very precise. Like, there's nothing you can never say. It's not objective. It's, sub, it's like, subjective? It's it's very fact factual. It's it's very fact based. Wow, that was a mouthful. It's factual. It's either handball or not. There's no in between. Um, so yeah, the penalty is given, and then uh, King Kai steps up and slots it in the corner. At like when he does that skip thing, I looked at the goalkeeper and I was like, oh damn, goalkeeper is going the same direction. But to be fair to Kai, he really really placed it in the corner, and that is how Germany go one nil up. To start the game, let me just rewind all the way to the beginning of the game. The first 10 minutes of the game, Germany were on these guys like a rush. On our live, we even said, like, we had more attempts on target in the first six minutes of the game than literally that entire Switzerland versus Italy game. Like, it was insane. There was um, a goal early on that was disallowed after Schlotterbach headed in in his home stadium. The game was being played in Dortmund. He plays for Borussia. So that was like a really, really sentimental moment for him. It's such a shame that the goal had to be disallowed. And then um, it was allowed because Kimmich was claimed to have blocked someone, which I think when you go back to 
and check the decision. It was the right decision. Then there was the Kimmich shot that was from far and it was just like a, a stunner. But the keeper did well to save it. Uh, that's Schmeichel, Kasper, former Leicester keeper. Then a minute later, there was a save from a header from a corner. And then two minutes later, there was the Havertz volley from the Rudiger long ball. And Germany were really... This is one thing I didn't think that they have in their locker. Like, set pieces is becoming a real weapon for them. They are, like, And I think it's just from the quality of the delivery, right? Every team has big players. Like, we were watching the Italy game. They have really big players. But the quality of the delivery can really make you guys become dangerous. And Tony Cruz, to be fair to him, like, those those corners were, like, on point, on point. Um, so, yeah, within the first, like, 15 minutes, they've had, like, amazing chances and jump uh denmark were just doing like the bear <laughs> they were doing everything to just hang on something that really helped them is that the game was stopped in the um in the 34th minute i think the game was stopped because there was thunderstorms so yeah i mean player safety is paramount so the game was stopped for 25 minutes i was surprised even after they came on they played the 15 minutes and still went into the break Normally, what would happen or what I've seen happen before, especially in rugby, is that since you've been out for already 20, for 25 minutes and it was close to halftime, it was 10 minutes from halftime, you come back, you play your 10 minutes, probably you have like a water break and then you continue the second half. Because they went in again for another break, that was like another 40 minutes. So even our life took forever and we didn't even go to extra time. I was just praying we don't go to extra time because then we'd have been live for almost four hours, which is fine. Like, I don't mind, but it's a long time to be live, you know. Um... So yeah, they had, uh, after the thunder lightning thing, they came back and almost immediately Havertz had a really good header from a round cross and it was saved by Schmeichel. To be fair to Schmeichel, he, it was a very dope reflex save. In as much as the ball came almost towards in his vicinity, he still needed to do like uh, a really good save and that was that was uh, really good. That kept him in the game. Rasmus Hoylun then had two chances just before halftime in the 41st and 45th minute. And he didn't manage to get either of them into the net. The first one was a bit more difficult because Schlotterbach was just joking at the back. I don't even know what he was doing. He loses the ball in his own area. Uh, Rasmus gets the ball and has a snapshot, but it just goes to the side netting. Then the second chance was um, Musiala giving the ball away, then Delaney giving the nice pass to... Oh, who gave? No, Eriksen doing one-time pass to Delaney. Delaney is running on goal, puts uh, Rasmus one-on-one. -on -one. He Keeper does well. Noya does well to kind of send him wide. By the time he comes to... When he shoots the ball, there's... Uh, they actually... Did they clear off the line? But anyway, he missed it. He missed it. But it was much harder, to be fair to him. Uh, no, it was easier than the first one. It was easier than the first one. They were both very difficult chances, but it was easier than the first one. But, I mean, those are two chances that... I, if he took any of them, I don't really blame him for not taking either, but... These are those moments when strikers live for like two chances in four minutes after your team is under pressure and you just take one. Like it really, it, it would have really put uh, Germany under pressure. Um, yeah, we've already talked about the Anderson Anderson's moment of this three minutes. Then ten minutes after the after the Kai goal, Kane had uh, Kane, Sane um, and Kai went were running in on goal. Kai one on one, and he misses a sitter. He chips it, and it just goes beyond the post. It was it was a really good chance in the live. Uh, shout out to everyone who came on the live yet again. We kept on saying how Kai needs to take these chances. Like he was getting again. In as much as I'm talking about Tohei Lun on that side, um, Kai had a very good chance to actually just seal the game, make it two nil, seal the game, and he missed it. The coach. Nagelsmann thought it was a foul. He ended up getting carded because he thought Sunny was fouled in the process of play. But Michael Oliver said no. Like, I mean, even if it's a foul, Kai went on, actually took a shot on target, right? Or at goal. A very good shot at goal. So even if it was a foul, he played advantage. So I think Michael Oliver was quite stunned. He actually dished out quite so many yellow cards than I'm used to. Um, you know, Oliver has Michael Oliver has those those moments where he comes in, he's very chilled. You guys will talk to him, whatever. He'll just look at you and like do this to you, and he's like, that's it. But then there are times when he's just fed up. He's just like, he just dishes yellow cards. And this was one of those moments. It doesn't come often, but he had one of those moments today. Then obviously the second goal came from Schlotterbach. If you guys watched my prediction, I was, I said Schlotterbach was, is the one place where Denmark really needed to target. 
he had he had he gave away a very cheap corner which almost led to a goal and then there was the chance that he gave to Rasmus from just joking in the back and i said that, that that's the one place that they really need to target and then just because he hasn't played in the whole tournament then then he's just coming on in in, in a big round of 16 game just the nerves so the combination of possibly making a mistake the nerves i thought denmark this is a place where denmark would target but to be fair to him credit to him he scored the first goal that was disallowed and he created this second one when he had a very good shot i mean a very good uh, ball that went over the top to musiala i don't understand what michael is doing because he kind of comes out he'd have gotten there at least cause problems right but even musiala if you look at the replay musiala like hesitates and he's like oh he's not coming out i'm going for the ball then he goes for the ball then musiala does so well to finish in the corner something that kai havertz should have done but it's okay you scored the penalty at least um i'm surprised kai havertz finished this game because he actually made some really weird subs um gundogan came off for full crook i thought full crook would come on for kai and then uh Vats came on from who was it i can't remember who he came on for but the subs were a bit weird but the gundogan one i feel like later on when i sat at the time it was being made i was like this is a weird sub but it made sense because to be honest gundogan was very quiet ineffective simply because of how denmark was defending denmark always had they always did, like went back with a back five but one thing germany does so well in this tournament is that the whole front three no one really stays in any position kai havertz yes is the striker but he drops deep or he runs he runs he runs past the defense he's moving all over the place they don't have like a, no, a focal point he's a focal point at times which makes a stagnant back four very difficult to defend against it so what Denmark did is that instead of having a back four that just stays there, they'd have a back five. But then every once in a while, when Gundogan comes into the pocket, one person from the back four shoots up. And then from the back five shoots up, then they switch to a four. And then he'd fall back in and then they switch to a five. It was a dynamic like sort of four and five. And it nullified those runs, those late runs into the box. And I think that that is the way you beat a... That's, you, that's the way you defend against a team that has a very mobile front four and front three. So, um, and sort of similar to what Italy was trying to do with Switzerland because they know that whole front five moves a lot. But what Switzerland did is instead of move, that whole front five moving, they kept two people stagnant at a, at every time. So instead of the five moving, it's, it was now the three moving. And I think Spalletti had planned for five players who are dynamically moving at the front and he, it caught him off guard. It caught him off guard. I don't think they were ready for that. Um, again, coaching, the chess is just like, I, I just love it. I just love it, guys. Um, so anyway, yeah, Musiala makes it 2-0. Um, and the rest of the game is just game management. Denmark didn't really offer that much of a threat going into the latter stages of the game. And yeah, we we're lucky not to have more thunderstorms because it was threatening and they would have pushed the game even longer. But Germany are through without stress, without fuss. 2-0, that's a good result. That's exactly what I predicted. That is my first correct score prediction i predicted who's going to win right many occasions but score prediction this was the first one two nil on the dot and yeah we move on to the other games of the round of 16 tomorrow we'll be live tiktok everywhere you just come find us youtube whatever um twitch every single place and yeah thanks so guys thanks so much guys i can't speak i'm just tired guys i need to go and sleep thanks so much guys uh we'll meet tomorrow and it's been a pleasure peace